Your setup's so different than mine. Ha, uh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I didn't. I, it's set up only as realistically set it up. However, you would set it up. Like that's how I would say set it up because you're play. You play it more than I do. I can. I can adjust to whatever setup. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> only because you've played yours a thousand more hours than me yeah <laughs> ten thousand more hours than me i have a very certain muscle memory to where i i could just close my eyes and play and if you switch it up on me that i keep one to hit here or just weird stuff like that like i keep one to hit places that you don't have well i will say that like <laughs> i'm going to get another symbol it's just going to take some time because the symbols i want are very expensive the new ones that I want are like 500 each. Mine will, uh, what the fuck did I want? Classics? No. Or no, is the mine is the new Minels. The aluminum. I forgot what they were, but I know they're Alloys, like the new ones. The brand new ones. I heard them in a recording and I was just like, oh, those so, so good. So I was like, I'm sold. I want those. That's how it was about those Peisty ones. Like, um, I saw... Well, hearing them live, I got to use them in New York, and my God, they just sound so washy and beautiful and like... So it's Peisty, not Pasty? Yeah. Is that the same name? Peisty? Pasty sounds more... That's how everyone's ever said it. Well... So Peisty. I I get it. I say Peisty. I think I've heard it said Peisty more than Pasty, which... Oh. uh, Then yeah, Peisty. Peisty! I'm covering up the vent. <laughs> Are you trying to kill us? <laughs> Heat. Heat. Stay I'm just trying to cool off my my uh, my cases. Oh my god! So much. I feel like I feel that air now. <laughs> I want. I don't know if it was just me watching you release the air, but I, I feel it. it on me now. <laughs> Yes, nice, isn't it? Yeah. Anyways, how are you guys doing? My name is Dylan. <laughs> this is Austin. And uh, welcome to the podcast. This is very complicated and hard to record. All of this is not easy. Very hard. Like, you guys don't see most of what's going on, but, like, a lot of things are happening. This is, like, and right, and the best part about everything that we've gotten so far is his new mics. <laughs> new mics. We had to run a new cable for the fourth time because I got a new setup. I've got the Earthworks DM7 kit. I got the two overheads, bass drum, and the four DM20s on the tops. Do they recommend pointing them like that or getting closer or further away? Uh, pointing them directly to the center. So like, yeah. Wherever you're going to hit the drum... This is where it needs to be pointed. It's just weird that you wouldn't move it more than that, like down lower or closer or like to the, I don't, I don't know. That just seems, I mean, it's easy to install. It's like, oh, they're good right there. Yeah, it's perfect. I do feel like they should be lower because they stick up so damn much because I've seen them lower. Yeah. But. But you also thought they were a lot smaller. So I thought they were way smaller. No (laughs) kidding. They are weirdly exaggeratedly small. (laughs) in videos yeah, i don't know if people are like because you're looking at a drum set and a person it they just look different but they are literally twice the size of what i thought they were yeah the same here whenever i picked one up it just felt like a, a little bit of a brick but also like i thought it was going to be maybe like the capsule is going to be like maybe my palm significantly almost like doubled that and then uh he also has to get a bottom snare mic so his collection of mics is not done although you could use that one mic as a bottom snare mic or i could just sell it and use the money to get another one of these but then you can't have a back kick mic that thing's worth 400 bucks. oh no it not that free. one no not that one i'm talking about uh my other one that looks like a little arm like this oh no sell that yeah <laughs> sell those and just the sure uh beta or bo- something 98 master beta Beta. <laughs> but yeah, I have one of those too, and that used to be my old top snare mic. But since getting these, that thing is either going to be retired. It's definitely going to be the bottom snare mic for a little bit until I can get me another DM20. Which would see, I mean, <clears throat> I guess catching the top is more important, but. It- no, I at my house, whenever I was trying the, I had one of these on the bottom. Oh my gosh. 
the it sounded so good hearing the snares like fully. Really? Yes. It uh, sounded great. I'm it, excited. It's I'm excited needed. for you to spend more money. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm not. I'm so excited for you to spend more and more money. As but, far as as far as what I got going on is I actually put my wireless setup together. I got my Axe FX fixed to where it doesn't sound like trash anymore. Doesn't sound like poop. I mean, God poop damn, water. dude. I mean, it was basically like playing with a dead amp. It was. It felt like just playing with a dead amp. <laughs> In my head, instantly went to playing with a dead animal. <laughs> <laughs> dead animal. <laughs> You fucked me all up there. Try one more time. I can't remember. I haven't played that song in 15 years. I haven't heard it in 15 years. I <laughs> know, but dude, it's a jam song. more fun when my guitar works <laughs> I yes just feel so much more and it actually confident. sounds really good yes and i feel so much more confident just playing anything in general it's one of those things where like i genuinely think that like yes as a musician having cheaper things you can still rip on but i think whenever you have a better sound better tone better everything all around which usually comes from more expensive gear you do open your creativity a lot more. Cause like, I swear to you, I'll play like, if I played without ear, like uh, ear protection in or something like that. And I just had like the raw drums going into my ears. Like I, I can play stuff, but like my mind is just like, Oh, loud drums, like fucking rock beat, whatever. But whenever I put in earbuds and everything sounds a lot more chilled out and it's quieter and like all the tones sound better. I swear. Like at that point I, my creativity just opens up even more. Oh, yeah. It's like the way you hear things, like, seriously changes what you can think of. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's people that... You ever met a singer who's like... I dropped my sticks. <laughs> you have sticks on the left. Also, You're okay. sticks on the floor to my right. <laughs> Did you fuck up my... You fucked it up. You what? fucked up the pattern. What I do? The sound dampening behind you. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, what you were saying. Have you ever like met a singer who's played on stage live their whole life and they've been singing the entire time, but they've never had in ears? And then the yes. first time they get in ears, like it's literally an emotional thing for them. They're like, I can actually hear my voice for the first time in years. Mm -hmm. I've met a few people like that, and they were just like, it's just. Every single singer should have in ears. They should. It's a different ball game. Completely, because like, you can just cut out all the, all the issues that you're having if the singer can't hear himself, which is probably the person who most importantly needs to hear themselves amongst all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a big fucking deal, and I I love having mine. I mean, this right here, this is as clear as like you can probably possibly get with like clarity, yeah. and then our our in ears that we have here. But uh, when I when I play guitar through my wireless and then hearing it all the way back, just through like even going through a studio, 
Okay, no, we're good. Anyway, <laughs> going through a studio for the first time and hearing like, oh, I can't actually play like you're just trying to play like this. Just something that simple. And you can't play it because you've never heard it like scrutinized in a studio. So you're just like, is that louder? Yes. Why is it a lot louder? God damn, that's loud. I don't know what happened, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> it sounds so weird going through a, <laughs> a Telecaster, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's like, what the? Always a fun one. Back to that one thing. That's why I'm very tempted to get uh, Cruel Queen on an X32. I should. <clears throat> Literally, that can run five people. Or even just use the interface that I have now because I use an, an interface for practice. If I just plugged in Aaron, instead of going into the PA, plug it into the interface and then do the out through my interface. God, I would love to be able to hear him. Aaron, he needs to be able to hear himself. Yeah. He needs wireless in ears. Yes, he needs them. He's probably like number he number needs, one candidate after me. Probably he needs wireless in ears and then uh, a compressor pedal before the wireless in ears, <clears throat> because goddamn his voice going from like <laughs> I know, <laughs> like it would be extreme. it's awesome though. It is great. His singing style is very soft, but you know. That's just the style that it is. But his screaming is like, he's fucking intensely he's loud. He's so loud and I love it. He's very fucking loud. I swear loud. to God, whenever uh, we were recording vocals for one of the, the albums, like I would be outside pulling into the driveway and I'd just hear Aaron inside recording vocals. <laughs> <laughs> like, holy shit. Oh, look at your fancy tuner. Oh, I don't need a tuner. Ooh. Fancy tuner. There's no fancy tuner. It's just the way that I tune. Here, let's 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 bring it back to uh let's bring it back to Kid Rock. I don't remember that one, so I'm doing a simple beat. That's a uh, cowboy baby. I'm a cowboy baby. Locked in knife in the boot damn body. Anyway, yeah, as you can tell, I've been practicing a little bit too. Yeah. <laughs> I've been just learning random songs just for fun. And uh, it's been awesome. I think that Cruel Queen could definitely... You can run any band through that setup, that entire thing. Like, Axe Effects can run four, four or five musicians at once. Yeah. And then, like, two guitars. The bass can run through the track, of course. And they can run through amps, because I have an amp on top of that. But uh, I, I don't know how well it processes voices. Because if you can process voices well enough, you might not need the x32 at all you know you could probably just run wireless in-ears and everyone chained to that one in-ear mm -hmm. and you get one mix that would be the simplest way to do it but do you think they would spend <sighs> three grand three four thousand i don't think so i could if i bought some of the things 
I'm sure they'd probably reimburse me on a few of them. The but... only thing I would like buy for yourself <clears throat> would be the X32, unless yeah. you are gonna run guitar specifically for yourself. Yeah. Which I don't see you doing. <laughs> just saying. I don't know. I just I do want to see Curl Queen run through an X32, and I know like, I mean they still have like the cheap in ears if they wanted to do it. I know they don't really move around on stage much. Just do one of those ones where you got a little pack on the side and then they just run a cable to you, but I don't think everyone would want to be cabled like that. A cable? What do you mean? Like They have to have a pack if they want to run wireless. No, I'm saying not wireless though. Like the the cheap, easy way that at least show them like with an X thirty two, I'd want to have the output I would ideally like to have one wireless, but to show them why it's amazing and why we should get one is just do like, there's a little tiny thing. It's like this, this big, this tall, just clip it onto your belt or your pants and plug in the XLR to it. And it's literally just like, uh, just like an in-ear mixer or like one of these, but instead of it being, cable to the wireless then the wireless is coming to us it's just like cable is just going to us which a lot of drummers use it i don't think they would want to use it as a guitarist or a vocalist because then you're already kind of limiting yourself using a guitar cable which i know both of them use guitar cables and uh i feel like having two cables to keep track of while you're playing on stage is not good right i do think it's bizarre to me that in the day and age of wireless so much <laughs> wireless <laughs> in this, this day and age of so much things wireless and like bluetooth wi-fi like all this crazy shit it's still so expensive to get a guitar to send a tone wirelessly it's yep. it's bizarre that it's so expensive, but they're also trying to do it with zero lag. Yeah. So I see why that's so difficult, but it's like, man, it it you would think that it would have trickled down by now and become very cheap. Now, I will say probably 15 years ago, like my wireless system, my for my guitar was probably double the price. Maybe it's mm-hmm. come down in half. I really don't know. And it, inflation and all, you know? Maybe like wireless was only a thing for big bands. That's it. Yeah. But I I have it in my house, so I'm a normal person. Yeah, so you can literally use your wireless and use your in ears and go play on the couch and just be like. Yeah. And I can continue to talk if I wanted to. If I wanted to set up my wireless microphone, I could go talk in there too. Like hands <laughs> free, wi- no cables. And my wireless mic can just I just take it right off. Hey, I'm talking. Yeah, that'd be sick. Just the amount of wireless things, like even just using it for the gaming stuff, is awesome because. Like you can oh, literally walk level. outside. You can walk outside and still hear you talking into the microphone and Which is so cool. You guys have no clue. <clears throat> Gaming setups that didn't know they needed to be improved, you need wireless. Wireless in ears are amazing for gaming stuff. Because you could just get up and hear everything still. Yes. We did try to do uh wireless uh uh pin yeah. la- lav mics, lavalier mics. Try to do wireless lav layer mics, but that is another level of you need to have like decent sure or sure or Sennheiser decent real lav mics. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's a receiver on top of the camera that receives it. You have another pack that's just like just like these. Another pack that's just like these. Uh, but it goes to a Sennheiser receiver up there and it will actually do a very good job. You could do that with this too. It's just that the type of wireless stuff that we have is just not optimized for that. Mm-hmm. It's just not that type of quality. So <clears throat> I want one of those one day. Yeah, for But sure. that's so specific. That is so fucking specific. I don't think I'll ever get one. I don't think I'll get one for a really long time unless I'm like, man, it would be just so nice to have this. But we would, we would literally we have to be making a living on content, which I know... I know we can make good content to where it's like we can get a ton of people watching. I know we can. It's not it's not immensely hard. But I think they have to take away something from it every time. 
Yeah. I know that if we educated people on music, like for sure, for sure it would get to there. And then we would just experiment over and over. You see all these all these music YouTubers out there that do reactions to stuff. They're not making any money off of that. They're making it for publicity. So their views keep going up because they know the moment that they watch that video and it starts playing, bam, it's gone. They have, it's, even though it's probably very good for them to make that kind of stuff, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's gone. Yeah. It's immediately, they're making no revenue off of it unless they have a deal with someone, which if they had a deal with someone, they would never say anything bad about it. But that's not every song is good. There was a there was a uh, a thing that I definitely think we still should do. We should definitely, and this would only work really well if we were much bigger. We should definitely do like uh, reactions to new music. So Mm -hmm. we go to YouTube, go to music, go to newest, run through a couple, react to it, tell what people, and hopefully it gives them some publicity. Most of them will probably not be copyrighted, but we mean the first day. The first day that we did that, that song Golden Hour came out. Yeah. That was the first day that I that came that, out. Yeah. And that was just us doing something random. We ran into the song. And we were like, yeah, that's a great song. And then I, that's where we discovered I Show Speed, which I did not know was a person. We uh, were wondering, because I was wondering, I was like, this dude has 17 million views yeah. on his on his song. It's been like five hours. Mm-hmm. And then we figured out that I Show Speed has like 20 million subscribers. <laughs> Somehow the dude's like not even 21 yet. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, he just recently came up on my Instagram and all that stuff later, like lately. I'm not saying he's not entertaining. He is very entertaining. He deserves everything that he has, clearly. But I will say, I don't know how he got there because I went through his YouTube and I was like, there's nothing particularly unique that I've seen. But I wanted to like see what he had. Like what mm-hmm. is what is I Show Speed doing to be able to release a song about soccer and get 17 million views. I forgot about that song. It was about soccer. It was about the World Cup. Yeah. Released in 2020. Wasn't it called World Cup? Yeah. Yeah. Which I think the World Cup's this year. But I don't know for sure. Anyway, I was just like, who is this? (laughs) (laughs) Why do you have so many views and I've never heard of you? So many subs and yeah. Never seen them, never heard of them. Still, I still think that's a genius it's a genius reaction thing. I'm surprised no one's done it yet. Yeah. But I understand why people are doing the big songs, like they're reacting to the big songs for the first time. Clearly, it's because record companies are going to push the song. That means they're advertising not only behind their song, there's advertising behind you mm-hmm. because you're pushing the song. So you're like riding the coattails of their advertisements. And I think that's a lot of like, there, as you do grow, I feel like you do get to a point where you are getting paid to review music versus like, uh, like I, I know for a fact people get paid to review music. Like, like, hey, there's this song. We want you to look at it for like this, this money. And really, yeah, like <clears throat> I know uh, it's, I guess, in our genre or like kind of the heavier genre. Um, I forgot his name. Um, it's basically a dude that is just like jamming to people's bands. Like he'll promote the song. People pay him to make posts about their songs. And he'll just be like, oh, this breakdown of this song. That's sick. And then just fucking throw his arms around and stuff like that. I know that's how he's getting some money. That's good. That's good. I'm glad if there is a way to make money, I am super happy for all those people that can do it. And there's no reason we cannot do that. We have clearly shown that we can make a gaming channel somehow. Yeah. It only took posting on TikTok for like two weeks. <laughs> After seven years of doing it. God. Uh, yeah. The gaming stuff's oversaturated and it's very hard. Uh, but if you can break through, it's not that bad. I dropped my pick. Ha! There's another one right next to you. But yeah, I think I don't think there is. <laughs> gosh, I I just really want us to focus on our our other stuff, start having to work less, and then put more time into that. The main thing is, is I want to play. I think that's the biggest problem. So if we if we focus to the point at which we made it a job, the difference is is like I, I this is what I would think if if <clears throat> if I just came to like your house or if we met somewhere 
and we're just like, okay, we have this, this, and this goal. We have to meet at this location. It's got to be before nine o'clock. You know, it's got to close. the The Starbucks is going to close. We have mm-hmm. to edit all this stuff and get it out this week, and really made it more of a business. I think it would be more successful. But the biggest thing, I think, the biggest thing for us is uh, scripting things. Mm-hmm. If we could figure out how to script stuff, because if we could figure out how to script stuff and make it to where people could watch continuously and continuously, I think that's where, you know, they want higher quality videos. It's not like it used to be to where it was like, you could just react to things. You could do certain things. It's going to, you, you could grow that way, but it's going to be slow. Like us doing this podcast legitimately is more for fun and us to just play Mm -hmm. though. It could be cool and people could join and play music with and all that stuff. Realistically, it's for us to like play, talk about stuff, you know, Re- watch this back when we're older my battery's dead and i think it's only running off of that now it might die at any point uh but like this is like the most us doing this gives me the most time playing out of any time yeah i get to play the most doing this and i really fucking like it so i i want to write music and i'm just so fucking picky about shit uh that's why i like keep emphasizing to justin about getting this music program to just write the music i was like i don't give a shit what it sounds like until you have the music written write all of it and the difference is i will say that me and justin also wrote the way that we wrote is that like we would send stuff back and forth to each other we'd come over every sunday and then we would review it and then write to it but if i just wrote guitar like just wrote my guitar parts drum parts and all the music and none of the vocals i could do it in two hours like i said i wrote that song in two hours Mm -hmm. that's how long it takes me to write that kind of music but as soon as i like throw a vocal in there changes everything changes Mm -hmm. everything it would change the entire tone of the music so i started to try to write music according to the vocals and that is where theseus's sound came from that's what our obsessed came from and that is where it's time to leave came from is from me making the vocal parts first because i just I see how important that is. It is so important. It's almost the only thing that matters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because if you think about it, that's in music today, that is like the only thing that matters. Like if you're going to get a piece of the pie, it's because you helped write some of the lyrics. Like you don't get that much for making just pure music anymore. Unless you're like, you're just straight up producer. Unless you're Polivia. <clears throat> yeah. But <laughs> I think a lot of where people get their copyrights, people get their publishing and all that stuff is based on the melodies and the lyrics. And that's that's the reason why I was like so pressed about being focused on that. And I know we tried to do like EDM and we still could, but we need to just narrow stuff down. People said that we had so much going on and we do. One of them is to support us financially. Mm-hmm. That is the only reason it exists is for us to be supported financially. Uh and man, if that takes off, that'll be great. Cause that's like frees up so much time, frees up so much time. Uh, and then one of them is for music. The other one's for games. Although <laughs> the gaming thing is like, I keep looking at it and going, man, I'm glad that we have this following, but like, how far could this go? Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, it's not in a position to where we're like going to make any money off of it. And am I, I also think of like, am I proud of doing this? Am I really proud of doing this? Mm. Am I like, <laughs> could I, this is fucked up, but could I go into a bar and like try to pick up a girl with this? <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm doing that, but I'll just like, I'm just thinking of like, God, I, if I met someone who was a legitimate streamer, I'd be like, man, I, I don't care that much at all. Yeah. It's like you do make stuff, but it's almost to a like animalistic point of like you're just playing a game and somehow you're getting paid a lot of money for it. I don't hate it. And that like that was my mindset is I love doing it because of the entertainment factor. I am having fun making something, but am I making something I'm proud of? I'm proud of the following we've made. Yeah. Sure. I'm like, oh man, we you know, we did that. Battery exhausted.
Oh, damn. <laughs> I ain't giving it to you. Ew. <laughs> I saw you just it so felt ready. Gross. It felt gross. <laughs> oh, it's over now. I've lost it. My, my heart, I've been edged out. <laughs> <laughs> you were just so ready for it. And I was just like, I'm just not going to give it to him. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't just hit it. <coughs> I couldn't. It was. It worked. <laughs> I can't make it not work by hitting it. Ah. <sighs> Yes. Anyways, what were we talking about? Uh, I guess one thing I, uh, I guess I want to mention just a little quick note. Do the drums sound amazing? Don't forget Do to subscribe. Better. Yes, and subscribe. Subscribe. Watch the button flash, but it probably already did. Anyway. But yeah, do the drums sound better? Maybe. And also, I think we were talking about the gaming stuff and all that. Ah, uh, yeah, about us being like particularly proud about stuff. I, I'm more proud of the CD that we made with Illustrator. I'm more proud of the music that I've made over the years. Mm-hmm. It is a lot more effort. And this, I understand why people keep their motivation. It's because playing, playing the songs that you wrote is really fun. It's really fun. I really do want to like, I I think we should spend some more time towards the music side of it because I, I so bad just want like just five. Just give us five that we can play. Like, I know. And, and I'm working go on do it. A show. Because, I mean, with the way that Losers is having shows right now, we could literally just go pick any weekend we want and go play. But is Losers having problems? No, they're literally hosting shows every single weekend. Yeah. Like, they're... That's because Trey's into it. There's as long no, as there's someone booking it. Yeah. There's no shortage of shows going on at that place. And it would be like a rough, <clears throat> a rough show. You know, it's like, okay, let's get our feet wet, see how things can go for like a couple months and then if we got to a point where we could actually tour a little bit like hey let's go play nashville Mm -hmm. you know but that's two different types of shows so it's like our show we could play and then we could also play a cover show i want that i want to be able to do both but that's a lot of time and effort ton of time and effort we already have all this going on and usually those cover shows are going to be like way longer sets I'm like, expecting three hours. Yeah. I'm expecting to have music for three hours, and then everybody got to sing some country. <laughs> country is, is well, it depends on how you look at it now, but it used, to just be, it used to just be ACDC. <laughs> It used to just be ACDC with a country accent. Everybody got a cut up. Fuck their sister on a dirt road. Beers. Beers. Trash. Beers. Trash. Money. Fishing. This is every ACDC song. If you like country music, it's fine. There's good country music out there. I swear to God, there is, but it's kind of boring. I like Hardy, though. He told a joke. You have to figure out where the joke is. (laughs) Very good. Very good. Anything up with you lately? Let's talk about something that you want to talk about. I'm talking. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh... I guess uh, the only thing that I really have right now is... Uh, America! America. <laughs> I don't know. Everything about my life America. right now is these, is these microphones. I have yet to actually even try them. Besides, like I recorded some things, but I have not listened to it. But I'm doing some covers for some songs for some bands that might potentially try to get some shows with. One it would be a really exciting announcement if you got on, but I would be excited because it's like childhood. Yeah. Teenager. Well, my 20s, not childhood. <laughs> anyway, early 20s when I was like, fuck yes. <laughs> so not low enough. But yeah, there's a, a, a few bands that I'm trying to get some work with and stuff like that, but. At this point now, it's like I'm almost drowning in debt because these things... It really is the last piece to your puzzle, though, as far yeah. as dr- like professionally live drumming is the last piece to your puzzle. You can't... 
it would be hard for anyone to make those sound bad. It would yeah. be hard to make them sound bad. They're just they're too clear and nice and pretty. But uh yeah, you might be drowning in debt, but hopefully you won't be in the next year. <laughs> yeah. At least that's the big <clears throat> goal is to just not drown in the next year. But yeah, so just trying to do the whole music journey thing and uh it does have its difficult points, especially whenever a job is offering as much as they're offering me and all that stuff. And I still think about it every single day. It's just like, am, am I ready to, I guess, pursue just being like, like grow myself online as a drummer? And You can do that at the same time, though. You should do that at the same time. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's... It's just hard. I am. It's just... Yeah, it's really difficult. It's really difficult trying to figure out uh, all that stuff because it's... It, here's the hardest part. Here's the hardest part about all of it. It's like you see all these drummers. These All these drummers had to be hired for these really big names. So The worst part for me is the fact that the drummer that we know the most, and I won't speak names, the person that he drums for has roughly 8 million monthlies. Mm-hmm. And not saying that's not a lot. That's a lot. The shows that he's playing are enormous shows. Absolutely enormous shows. But like, it was surprising what he was getting paid. It was surprising. It is a, it's a very livable wage, especially if you like don't own a house. Cause you really don't need to, yeah. uh, in that situation. It, it, it's, I'm just like, okay. You can make a a little bit above average livable wage doing something that is amazing, but you have to be so damn good at networking, apparently. Mm -hmm. So damn good. Like, do sessions, do every single thing, never say no, you know, hustle until you just can't for 10 years, and then maybe you'll get a livable wage. Yeah. <laughs> that just sounds fucking hard. And I'm yeah. not saying I want you to try to pursue it because I would love to pursue it. I would love to have the opportunity to play for anyone who is doing any music successfully. But it's almost kind of like a reset because I wouldn't, if I were to ever like have to stop playing live for a bit to like catch up on finances and all that stuff, I would never stop drumming. So I think like I would still grow myself as a drummer using online however I can. And there, are, I've seen people that literally just play enough in their basement, make enough videos to where someone huge sees it. Like, hey, going on an arena tour, you're a badass drummer. Come out for the like, the month or two months. And that's the that's how Luke Holland was. <clears throat> yeah. Now he's with Falling in Reverse. And that's how um, what's his name? Never wears a shirt. Blonde hair. Can't remember his name, but literally was he went from like playing like small shows with like any band that he could play with to literally just playing with probably over a hundred different artists now and like doing stadium tours and like Europe, UK, all that stuff. And it's like to have the flexibility to just be able to kind of choose what you want to do is the ultimate goal. Right. <clears throat> and that's why we're doing what we do specifically. Mm -hmm. That is the the push the push for us is more of stability in a, a an extremely unstable market cuz like hired musicians are paid per gig. Just like um session musicians, you know, paid per gig, do it right and then maybe we'll continue to pay you as we keep going. Mhm. Mm but like you got to have some kind of like backup. Like there's got to be something is most musicians that are professional musicians are apparently bartenders because yes. they're ex bartenders are extremely flexible, extremely flexible. And, it, and they get paid enough to live. That's the biggest thing. <laughs> most musicians are just trying to survive. They're make, they're not making enough to survive, but so they have to go to bartending because they know it's immediate money, all cash Gen well, not all cash, but generally cash, not much tax is taken out on it. Like it's super flexible. People don't care if you come back and leave for a month, they'll always take you back. Like jobs, other jobs are just not like that. 
So mm-hmm. the only way, only way I could see us doing that to where we're just paid, uh, paid musicians, where we can have the security of that is what we're doing now, which are with all our sales stuff. It's the only thing I could see. It's the only way that I could see it working. Mm-hmm. Other than you just have to like either start a business or know someone who has a business that will let you do it, and you have to work your damn ass off for them. Yeah. That's why I just really want our sales staff to like do better and better. Just keep going up. Do the sales stuff. And then if we get all the online content killing it, then we could get, you know, go vlog and stuff. I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing behind our videos is one, one, we have to script them. Two, we have to make them not, pretty much not about us. We are the people talking, but it's not about us. Mm -hmm. We're reviewing Earthworks mics today compared to this mic and this mic and this mic we're reviewing dw drums versus these drums this this drum this drum and this drum this is our favorite drum this is why this is our fate this is our second favorite drum this is why if you just want to play drums this is what you should get if you need this symbol or that symbol i like this symbol or that symbol now that gets really expensive and we would need some kind of sponsorship in order to like if we had backing us up and just sending us stuff and then we just send it back to review Mm -hmm. like we don't even have to keep it just send it to us let us talk about it and then we'll send it out and then we'll say hey supported this or something like that which i'm gonna bleep that because fuck that (laughs) (laughs) but i mean they do have a set of like demo stuff for people to do that like i'm sure if we got in contact with sweetwater or I mean, Zach Roof does it, dude. Yeah. We could literally just kind of play around with stuff. A lot of people that have reviews for these microphones don't own them. Like, uh, they're, I've seen a few where they're like, hey, like, Sweetwater sent these over. I can't wait to play them and try them before I have to send them back. God, I, think, I feel like people will be so biased with us, though. They'll be <laughs> like, all right, you only heard us play one way with only one particular set of sounds, which means, <laughs> like, the most professional sounds. Mm-hmm. almost completely the most professional sounds, the most professional lighting, most professional cameras, everything we are in the, we have enough here to make as much money as we possibly want. We just have to do that particular thing. <laughs> I just, I know we have to, we have to just commit to doing that. I do have an idea of like, like my ideas are hard. They're very difficult to execute. So mm-hmm. like this is hard to execute. We're doing it, but it's hard to execute. Now it's more isolated, so it's a little bit easier. But like, like I said, I wanted to do scripted reviews of things, vlogging specifically, because you just don't see it. Yeah. But I understand why you don't see it. It's fucking hard. But if you shoot it like a TV show, because you could shoot it like a TV show, it's like though we're vlogging and experiencing the world and like making a music video over here, making a music video over here because we need to do a sound check for this thing or this thing, right? Mm -hmm. We don't. We can just keep running it back until we get it correct. And of course, people will get on, you know, hopefully we don't ever get robbed and stuff like that. That's why I'll yeah. have to bring in cheap stuff, cheap drums. Like, I'll probably bring my Pearl set for us to do, like, shooting outside. I really don't want to bring my DW set because I'm legit afraid someone would steal it. Oh, for sure. 100%. My guitars, I would probably bring the cheapest one that I have. <laughs> Which is what? <laughs> Surprisingly, that one over there. Yeah. A little Ibanez. My Ibanez. Actually, my seven string is, but like my GNL, this, each one of these guitars are probably $1,200 or more. So that's a hard, <laughs> that's yeah. hard. Uh, that's my dad's uh, Fender Strat that I absolutely love. That guitar is awesome. I just can't use it wirelessly a lot. It's Whenever you got it back, there was blood on it. There was blood on it. Uh, I need to let my dad have it back because he really likes playing it. He loves that guitar, loves that guitar, and I don't know... Why he loves it so much? I think it's because it's the only... He's only got like th- four nice, nice guitars, and that's one of them. Just for some reason, he just really particularly loves that one. Mm-hmm. He, Which I do, too. I understand. I'll say this. The Fender Strat is the most comfortable guitar out there. You can sit down right here with it, and nothing is painful in any yeah. way. You can sit in a bed with it, and it's like formed perfectly to you because it has this cutout right here super light the back end is like thin enough to be very comfortable this swoosh right here is really perfect and it's round so this is like a flat board yeah it's just a flat piece of wood like that is curved a little bit yeah that thing is curved to fit a person 
It is the probably the best guitar, like best designed guitar in my opinion that's ever been designed. Because everyone emulates that thing. Everyone emulates it. Every everyone has a, a strat. Of that. Yeah. Everyone has a strat. Uh, I think the next best is probably, I mean, the Ernie Ball, the Ernie Ball Majesty. It's so comfortable to play, mm-hmm. but it's tiny. It's a very tiny guitar. So if you're a big guy, you're gonna make that thing look small. <laughs> it's a very fun guitar. It it's feels like fun. cheating. It does feel like cheating. It's just, it's well made, really well made. Honestly, this guitar is not very comfortable. It just has a certain sound that you can't get with any other guitar. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I I do really want to focus more on the music stuff again because that was nice seeing the product that we we were creating and stuff like that. And I think putting more time into doing the music, trying to make music content, because I do think the idea of doing the vlogging and reviewing stuff is awesome. We just have to start diving into it. I completely agree. I, I think that we need to set our expectations just a little bit tiny lower. Start reviewing things. Just start reviewing something. <laughs> the dog's just bolting in here. Start reviewing something. All right, all right. Calm, calm. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Drums. <laughs> That'll get him out. I'm trying to catch up to you. And I'm like, <laughs> it's really fast to just join in on. One, two, one, two, three, four. Do you, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Do you hear how this guitar sounds? Yeah. It's like. Th- that that sound. With Twang. The, the Telecaster is the wildest guitar sound i swear there's a reason why everyone in post hardcore wanted to use this guitar it's because it had that twang to it i don't know what it is about it but god it's so thin but like heavy Anyway, terrible. No, 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 it's all good. Oh, uh, our our uh, lofty leader Donald Trump was recently arrested. Or uh, not arrested? Sorry, <laughs> convicted. Yeah. <laughs> Yeehaw! Anyway, yeah, that's big news today. So, conviction of Donald Trump, go down in history. First time a f- president, former president, became a felon. Yeah, it's crazy. I I don't really know too much into the uh, the political stuff. I usually just stay away from. Do you know what his case was about? No. <laughs> Super easy. It was about him paying porn stars hush money to not t- tell anybody they had sex. Huh? Convicted on thirty six counts. God damn! What a baller! <laughs> <laughs> The fact that he had that much money, it was like, ah, I know you're a porn star here. here. It's like, bitch, I paid you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And now he's being convicted. It's like, well, whatever. I have no opinions on it, but that is what happened. You got his hat. <laughs> I got his hat because it's an it's a historical hat. It's like it's like Abe Lincoln's hat, but like by itself. Like this is the hat that he sold to America. It's the most iconic hat for a president there's ever been i bet that hat will be worth like three or four hundred dollars when i'm 50 uh maybe i guess is that like an original one it's original it's, it is a 100 percent maga hat i bought mega, it mega, from, mega. i bought it from uh trump's store then maybe if it's you can american made that, yeah if you can prove that it's like authentic and stuff like that if there's something on it then yeah i have the box with the trump stuff in it and a vo- invoice Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's real. But, yeah. Uh, what else? Anything Anything you want to talk about? I'm going to wrap it up. No, I, do, I mean, I just want to hammer home on the getting music videos. 
Yeah. Videos on music. Videos things. on music. And also, it it is difficult to post daily on music stuff. Because you could. You, you have covers that you do, Ooh. right? Yep. You could also do the same thing that all the... Uh, you know, the other people are doing with like making content daily about stuff like that. And it's difficult without music that you have. I mean, it takes time. A lot of time. It takes a lot of time and people expect it every day. It's like, you can't make something quality every single day unless you did, unless you did it like Rob Deerdeck does it where he's extremely efficient, where he does it in like three months. Mm -hmm. He just crushes it for three months or whatever amount of days it is, you know, like you could, if you had a day, one day where you're dedicated to just making, all right, I have to make seven posts, but like your quality posts can't do that. You just can't. You, yeah. you have to get your sound right. Your sound is fine. It's good to go. You have to get the song right. You have to learn the song. You have to play the song. You have to set your lights up. You have to program your lights. You, you have, have to, to make set sure up each song. To set up each, each song. You have to make a title that's decent. You have to pick a song that is relatively popular. It is not easy to post every damn day. <laughs> I kid you not. Just for one, like one 20 to 30 second video, uh, I was having trouble with it one day from the time I decided what song I wanted to do. It took me like almost five hours to get this 30 second video done. A 30 second <clears throat> video. And that's the thing. We have to be able to make it basically if you can make seven days worth of content in a day like that would work but man that's a lot of work even for this even for the the tiktoks that we did do when i was taking over i would do them all in one day that took me three hours minimum yeah it took me three hours to get like decent tiktoks and then for podcasting it's pretty hard too because you what you do is you pay, like I edit the whole podcast at one time and I try to remember to put marks on spots that I think are funny. So I'll mark the spot, move on, keep editing, mark mm -hmm. the spot, move on, keep editing. But I don't ever remember to mark the spot. I'm trying to do that and get in that habit, but man, and then I have to watch the podcast that I just fucking watched. That is an hour long again, <laughs> just to find seven clips. It is so hard. And I know now they have AI stuff that can generate that stuff for you. I know that is a thing. And they have like ranking systems, but I ain't paying for another platform. If it cut down the time, I might. And if it was like proven, like this thing does really well, it actually does find your stuff and it flips through all your stuff very, very well. Mm. I would do it all day. And people do make a living just off CapCut because CapCut is such a good editing program. Yeah. But you got to pay for it though. It's on the subscription base. Which... Yeah, people have to make the money, but it sucks. I gotta say, Calf Cut is really good. I am surprised. It for as cheap as it is, like maybe five bucks a month. Five bucks a month, man, for something that you could definitely like. It is a full blown editor for your phone. Mm -hmm. People made a ton of money off of it. Oh, I'm sure. Like anything people use these days, if you can. I guess... Uh, oh, the one thing about CapCut, though, <clears throat> they're microtransacting the shit out of everyone. So oh. it's like they have AI-based, you know, AI-generated based, you know, AI -generated based uh, filters now. If you've seen yeah. the Fallout one, everyone's fucking seen the Fallout one. You just take a picture of something and it scans over and it's an AI-generated picture of a Fallout of the exact scene of that picture. They will let you do it free for like six turns, six pictures, and then they will start charging you. Yep. Trying to get you hooked. And then, it's hard, man. Like, if it weren't for the fact that it's so good, if you had like a very easily viral, <laughs> dude, that it's wild watching some people that like randomly get famous for no reason. It's like this person dances in this closet. You remember when I said you that? I don't remember that. This girl that I was like, oh, this girl puts out Cassie vibes. Like, just dance. She was just dancing, just in, like in this way that I was like, that kind of reminds me of Cassie's style. Mm-hmm sent it to you and then i actually checked out her her page and i was like how does this girl have nine hundred thousand followers and every one of her videos has like three million views <laughs> i'm like she's dancing in the closet that's all she's doing and she's not even like that pretty i don't know some people i guess viral shit is weird <laughs> yeah there's some weird stuff like there there are videos and content creators out there where it's like how did you get to this point like you don't make good content yet you're at this point. 
I don't know. It's nuts. It's weird. D's nuts. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll end it off Close on that. Closeout song? Oh, definitely the song I started with. I was having fun playing Bulls on Parade. <laughs>